Hi, welcome everyone. So we've just begun our live broadcast and we're going to get uh, started with our presentation really shortly once everyone has about a minute or so just to log on and make sure everyone um, is connected and joining us. So please stay tuned and we will get started very shortly. Okay, so welcome. Uh, we're going to get started with some housekeeping and introductions and hopefully that'll give everyone a few more minutes to log in uh, before the presentations get started today. Uh, so welcome. Thank you for joining us uh, for our funding your graduate initiative session uh, where we're going to be hearing about uh, funding opportunities with both GSEF and GSI. Uh, so my name is Sarah Howard. I'm a graduate student experience specialist at Graduate Studies and Postdoctoral Affairs, and I'll be hosting and moderating uh, today's event. Um, and you'll hear uh, from our panelists about the GSEF and GSI funding opportunities. Uh, so I'm happy uh, we have um, Matthew, uh, who's the GSEF coordinator with us today, as well as Cindy, who is the Vice President of Administration at the Graduate Student Association. Uh, so both of them will present on their respective funding opportunities for you. Uh, and then after their presentations, we're going to have some time for a live Q&A. So this will give you a chance to uh, ask your questions about these funding opportunities and learn a little bit more. Uh, you can submit your questions at any time, but just keep in mind that we won't ask them until we get to that Q&A uh, time at the end of our session. Um, but you can submit them, like I said, anytime using the Q&A um, button, which you should be able to find at the bottom of your screen. If your question is specifically for uh, Matthew or Cindy, you can indicate that in your question as well, so I can direct it to the right person. Uh, otherwise, I'll direct it to both of our panelists today. Uh, so a few other uh, housekeeping items before I turn things over to Matthew. Uh, first, this session is being recorded uh, so that it's available to anyone who's unable to join us live today. As an attendee, uh, I do just want to let you know, though, that you don't have audio or video, so you won't be captured in the recording. And I won't be reading out your name with your question, so that won't be captured either. Uh, um, additionally, you'll note that the chat function is turned off today. This isn't to just ensure that all of your questions go through that Q&A and we don't miss anything that might come through the chat. Uh, if it's relevant though, we might send you with some links to relevant web pages through the chat. Uh, so you can keep a lookout for some links coming through there. Uh, finally, I know we're just getting started with our session today, but I do want to let everyone know that when you leave the webinar, um, when it finishes today, you'll be prompted with a link to a survey. Uh, we really value your feedback on today's event. It uh, just takes a minute or two to complete and you will have a chance to win a prize. So uh, when we do get to, to the end of our session today, uh, please, if you can take just a moment or two to fill out that survey, we really appreciate it. All right, so that those are all of my housekeeping items for today. So I am going to uh, turn things over to Matthew now to tell you some more about GSEF. Thank you, Sarah. I'll share my screen now. Everything looks good. Brilliant. So hi, I'm Matthew. I'm the coordinator of GSEF and as Sarah mentioned I'll be telling you about what the Graduate Studies Endowment Fund is and uh, how you can use it. So just a little bit about GSEF. Basically, we exist to better the experience of graduate students at the university. This can be through learning, research, the social experience. It's essentially to make your time as a graduate student that much better. So GSEF has actually been around for about 20 years and as I mentioned it's designed to make sure that students can improve their graduates 
uh, experience. But it's more than that. It's enabling you specifically to improve your graduate's experience. So what I mean by that is GSEF is an organization run by graduate students for graduate students. And we have two main bodies. We have a project review committee and we have a board of directors. The project review committee takes applications each semester from graduate student groups for various uh, initiatives that they want to put on, say a conference or a social event, and they require funding for it. And what the project review committee does is it reviews those applications and makes a recommendation for funding to the board of directors. And later on in this presentation, I'll actually, well, that will be the entire point of this presentation, talking about how to use funding, what sort of applications do you submit to the project review committee. The board of directors is o oversees GSEF, so they are responsible for like the long range planning, uh, approving the budget, and basically any new initiatives that GSEF might undertake. Now, the project review committee takes on two representatives from each faculty, and then the board has a representative from each faculty as well as well, in addition to some representatives from the GSPA. So how does GSEF work? What happens each semester is you might see on your, in your fees that there is a contribution to GSEF and it's a $20 contribution where 50% of it goes towards uh, the endowment fund. It would be for basically putting it in the bank to build interest for the future so that GSEF can become self-sustainable. The remaining 50% is the trust account. And that's what we spend upon graduate students each year. And within this uh, trust account, this is what the budget breakdown looks like. You notice that most of our funding goes towards research travel awards, which is a good thing when, you know, people can actually travel and there isn't a global pandemic going on. So what we're in the process of doing is uh, we're in conversations to discuss how exactly do we still make use of $100,000? How can we redivert it away from travel awards to uh, graduate students? And this is something that, we've been think that I've been thinking about for the past few months. We also collaborate with the GSA on orientation. We provide $5,000 for them. We also collaborate with the GSPA on the three minute thesis by providing them $5,000. And then this uh, budget year, we also included $30,000 for COVID-19 related support for graduate students. This was matched by the GSA and GSPA so that there was $90,000 for an entirely new scholarship for students finishing their degree and uh, for students who have lost funding because of COVID-19. So what I want to spend the rest of the time talking about is this $24,000 pot of money. That's for student projects. That's what you can apply for in order to put on new initiatives. So GSEF has been uh, funding projects, funding various ideas of graduate students since about 2008. And I'm going to give you a few examples of what GSEF has funded. A few years ago, in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, they had a couple fridges that were relatively old and happened to stop working at roughly the same time. So what ECE did was submit an application to GSEF saying, well, we'd like to purchase new fridges for the graduate space. And the fridges were relatively expensive and we had a bunch of applications that semester. So what GSEF did was say, we like your application, but we don't really have the funds to uh, provide you with enough money for two fridges, so we will give you one of them. But as luck would have it, right after we approved part of their funding, the fridges actually came on sale. So they ended up being able to get two fridges for the price of one, and everyone's a winner. And as far as I know, the fridges are still in operation and will 
still be operating for the next several years. About 18 months ago, we received an application from the Department of Architecture where they wanted to put on a periodical. And this would be a periodical designed exclusively for publishing uh, by graduate students and it would be run publishing for graduate students and it would be run by graduate students. And they provided an example of this periodical. And because GSEF was impressed by its quality, we provided them with a seed grant such that they would be able to, such that we would cover all their printing costs so that they would, any profit that they made would then be able to go into the next year's periodical and they wouldn't have any remaining overhead. A third example of what GSEF has helped fund was a psychology conference back in fall 2019, where it was, I believe, industrial and organizational and behavioral uh, psychology, where what GSEF did was help cover the food costs of this conference. So, as you can see, GSEF has published, has, uh, funded a wide variety of different ideas over the years. And now that you have an example of what, G what sort of things GSEF has funded, let's talk about how you can apply for GSEF funding. Now, there are two application deadlines. There's one coming up on October 16th. This is for funding requirements greater than $600. And then we have deadlines every month for funding that's under $600. And I've given you three examples of what GSEF has funded, but those are by no means exhaustive. We will accept any application that helps benefit graduate students, and we judge those applications based upon things like quality, value, departmental support, and urgency. So last year, we funded over $25,000 in graduate student projects. What this means is that we funded about 26 projects. Now, I don't know the exact numbers of how many students were beneficiaries of this funding, how many students uh, benefited from it, but as a lower bound, it's easily hundreds of students. I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere between 1,000, 2,000 students benefited in some way from GSEF's funding. So to apply for GSEF funding, what you do is you go to the website gsef.uwaterloo.ca and you click on the tab to apply for project funding. And you will see that you get two applications, uh, two links, each one goes to uh, their own application. And you will also see some examples of past projects. For example, this glitch on Silent Night came from architecture where they were having a public exhibition uh, in the city of Cambridge. As I mentioned, there was the psychology conference that I showed uh, a couple of slides ago. And then we also funded a tour for electric, for ECS, uh, chemical engineering, I believe, where it was to tour a hydrogenics plant. Now, one thing I want to highlight is, as Cindy will be talking about uh, later today, later in this session, there's also GSI funding. And they are two separate pots of money. And from my perspective in GSF, I highly encourage you to apply for both pots of money. So let's talk about the applications. What exactly is that you need to provide? On both applications, you should provide some sort of description of the project and also how many graduate students does it benefit? How does it benefit graduate students? Basically, you need to sell the project because in some semesters, you might only be competing against one or two projects that might be in this 
uh, spring semester, but in the fall semester, you might be competing against uh, four, eight, or 10 projects. You will also need to indicate, well, what sort of budget are you dealing with? And say, what exactly do you want to provide GCEF funding? What do you need GCEF funding for? And when you indicate what sort of things you need GCEF funding for, make sure that you also include multiple quotes. Because depending on uh, how much funding is in the budget, we might, be, we might not be able to supply escargot at your conference, and you might have to settle on sandwiches. What you also need to do is indicate support from some sort of faculty member uh, that in the large application, this will require a letter basically saying that the faculty member supports this idea. In the smaller application, all you need is a signature. And then for the larger application, also think about financial sustainability. GSEF has uh, provided funding to repeat applicants in the past, but we usually like to discourage this if you're requesting funding for the same thing year after year, we want to use our funding to get new projects off the ground. So that's why we want you to think about financial sustainability. We're happy to provide you with initial funding and maybe funding the next couple of years if you need it, though if it's uh, something that's repeatedly happening, you need to start thinking about how do you make this uh, more permanent in case GCEF is unable to provide you with funding during uh, one year or another? So let's now talk about how exactly is your project graded? Basically, what goes into the evaluation? The small projects for under $600 and the large projects for over $600 are evaluated in roughly the same way. Basically, you send an application to the GCEF coordinator, myself, at gcef at uwaterloo.ca, and I will forward them to the project review committee. What the project review committee does is it will review your application, looking at the various criteria that I indicated before, such as quality of your application, how many graduate students it will benefit, urgency of the funding, do you have um, other funding also reserved for the project from other sources. And based upon that, in addition to how many other applications we receive, the project review committee will make some sort of recommendation for how much funding should be provided. That will then go to the board of directors for final approval. Usually the board of directors is not quite a rubber stamp it, but if the project review committee does its work correctly, basically if I do my work correctly, then the board will have no concerns over the recommendation of the project review committee. For large projects, the situation is extremely similar. You send an application to GSEF, I forward it to the project review committee, but then we actually meet with you after you submit your application. This will be basically to better understand what it is that you require in for the funding. Basically, it will be some sort of presentation and a discussion. This isn't meant to be intimidating. It's basically so that we make sure we have all the information to accurately judge your application. Then, based upon the information, the project review committee again makes a recommendation of the amount of funding to provide, and then they set, and then they send it to the board for final approval. So, with the total time frame between submitting your submitting your application to hearing back from GCF, is going to be somewhere between three to five weeks or so. It really depends upon how many other applications we receive that semester. And since uh, we need to meet in person for this large project, it's also dependent upon people's availability. So 
the, what the project review committee will do is either recommend full funding, partial funding, or no funding. This partial funding could be basically, we're happy funding everything except maybe this uh, $100 honorarium because GSEF isn't able to fund honoraria. But once that happens, you will receive an acceptance letter with any conditions on your funding. So this acceptance letter will say exactly what you can use the funding for. It will reflect what you say in your application with any maybe maximum amount of funding per person. And then after that, you can go ahead and make your purchases. And what GSF will do is it will reimburse you for the expenditures. And that will happen by submitting your receipts, a hard copy of your receipts to the GSF treasurer. So I want to provide a few comments on your applications. Basically, be as specific as possible. This will really help you set yourself apart from the other applicants. You might have the best application in the world, but if you're super vague, you won't, your quality will not be as great as uh, other applications that GSF might receive that semester. And make sure you keep all receipts since if you want to be reimbursed, you need to submit your receipts. Now, one thing I want to stress is if your funding needs to change after you submit the application, let me know as soon as possible. Since if you don't let us know and we submit the acceptance letter, basically if you try to spend funding on something that's not in your acceptance letter, then there is a reasonable probability that you will not be able to receive a reimbursement for that. Now, sometimes funding needs change after you receive your acceptance letter. So in that case, just email me. And if it's within the same spirit of the application, then we'll probably say, yeah, you can go ahead and spend your funding on this new item. Otherwise, the project review committee might need to reevaluate the application with the new information. Now, regarding department support, you require to have a letter or a signature saying that, yes, someone in your department supports it. But in terms of financial support, this is encouraged, but it's not required. We recognize that some departments have considerably more financial resources than other departments, so it wouldn't be fair to uh, tie GSEF funding into uh, requiring department financial support. So the one thing that I want to leave you with is if you have any idea for an application, anything whatsoever, and it benefits graduate students at this university, no matter what campus it's on, we will consider your application. It could be a social event. It could be something for mental health packages. It could be a conference. Basically, if you can justify the benefit and show how, that, how it affects graduate students, how it's going to benefit graduate students, I strongly encourage you to apply. I want you to apply. Now, coming back to the deadlines, I want to remind you again that this, uh, in a couple of Fridays, October 16th, there's going to be the deadline for the October 2020 round of funding applications. So I strongly encourage you to apply. Um, it, or if you know someone who might be interested in applying, basically tell them to apply. And I also want to give a small plug for the fact that we are recruiting arts uh, board member from the arts faculty and a project review committee member from math and engineering. The deadline is October 7th. So if you are from these faculties, I strongly encourage you to think about this opportunity to be part of the GSEF Board of Directors and Project Review Committee. You will help give back to, the, uh, to graduate students, help graduate students benefit uh, and gain, and you'll gain new experience. It'll look great on 
your CV and employers will love to see that. And if you're not from those faculties, well, don't despair. There will be new openings from different faculties coming up in the next uh, few semesters. So to conclude, GSEF is basically allowing students to take power over their own uh, graduate experience and we help provide funding to ensure that they can uh, put on those initiatives that they have an idea about. And as I've stressed several times before, always apply. I mean, you're not going to get funding if you don't apply. And even if you're not successful the first time, that does not disqualify you from seeking GSEF funding uh, later in your graduate career. As I mentioned, the Project Review Committee and the board will, we are seeking applications by October 7th and GSEF project funding by October 16th. And if you have any more, if you want to find out more information, you can visit our website or feel free to contact me at gsef at uwaterloo.ca. So uh, thank you for listening and thank you for the invitation, Sarah, and I'll be happy to take any questions during the Q&A period. Wonderful. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, that's uh, a lot of information for people and I do see a couple of questions have come through already. So just a reminder for people that uh, who are submitting questions, we will respond to those during the Q&A after uh, Cindy has finished her presentation, but please keep uh, submitting questions as they come up. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Cindy now to tell you about um, the graduate student initiatives. Hi, everyone. Thanks for the introduction, Sarah, and thanks for GSBA for having us here today. Uh, so I'll be talking to you about our Graduate Student Initiatives, or GSI. My name is Cindy Young. I am the GSA's Vice President of Administration, um, and I'm happy to have this uh, presentation with you. So I'd like to start off by saying, if you're new to the university, to welcome you to the fall 2020 term, um, and I wanted to give you a short introduction of what the GSA is all about at the University of Waterloo uh, and what kind of services we provide, including providing funding for any of your initiatives. So for the GSA, our role is that we are the sole representatives of graduate students at the University of Waterloo. We actively promote and represent graduate student interests at all levels, including the university administration and levels of government. We provide a number of services such as legal aid, tax aid, uh, health and dental plans through student care, as well as the GRT and ION UPASS. We also operate the Graduate House, which is located on main campus. We're running with uh, reduced hours right now from Monday to Friday, 11.30 to 6 p.m. Feel free to stop by even if it is to have another study space at home. Uh, and we're fully compliant with the COVID-19 pandemic um, health regulations. We also host on and off campus events. Uh, and most importantly for this session, we offer financial support for events organized by graduate students, whether they're in clubs or associations. And right here on the right hand side, you see our commitment and just highlighting our mission which is that we serve the graduate students um, and in order to enhance the quality of academic and social experience of graduate students, which is what this GSI fund is all about. So what is the GSI? We are run by uh, the GSA. Uh, all graduate students are eligible to apply for funding for either social or academic initiatives. To be eligible though, you need to submit through one of two streams. The first is that uh, you need to be a GSA recognized student association um, from the faculty or departmental or program level. From the department level, you might have heard of your um, de uh, departmental GSA, um, that's what it's called. And you can see a list of those at that link here. You can also apply as a social committee. So if you don't have a uh, departmental GSA or perhaps you'd like to do it separately, then you can form a committee of three or more active grad students uh, for the purpose of submitting a proposal for a GSI. 
In terms of our funding criteria, uh, we're different from GSEF, including their um, smaller initiatives that are less than $600. For us, we consider anything up to $500, 100% uh, of your proposal. And then if your proposal is more than $500, we then see your um, eligibility for 50% of the next 500, and then potentially funding 25% of any amount additional to that. Proposal applications are, that are offered funding um, by the GSA, they must provide itemized receipts in order to be reimbursed, similar to GSEF. And funds offered by the GSA must be used within the term that they are offered. So these are two important stipulations within our criteria. In terms of our application process, uh, again, different from GSEF, um, but for the, we do have a form submission as well. Uh, you'll find that here on the link um, that I'm showing back on our website. Uh, we do a call for proposal three times per term. So make sure that you uh, submit according to the schedule. And the form is shown here on the right hand side where some of the key entries that you'll be entering are for funding category, either you're selecting for academic or social, as well as um, biographies of the organizers, whether you're from your departmental GSA or from that social committee. Um, the date, location, cost of the initiative, and the amount requested, and a budget where you might have um, a different amount requested as compared to the cost of the initiative. For example, if you're thinking of an initiative that costs more than $500, and, um, but you're only requesting $500 from it, that would be the amount requested versus the cost of the initiative. As well as a description of the initiative, what value it would bring to graduate students, as well as the organizers' roles and responsibilities. For example, if you're doing this within the departmental GSA, you might want to talk about what your communications person is doing on this forefront, as well as um, if you have a specific person in charge of events and um, other types of communication. We also want to know about risk mitigation. For example, if you are um, having a guest speaker uh, for your specific initiative, but that individual um, might have might not be able to make it. Do you have any alternatives? Uh, and also any other funding sources that might be involved, for example, a GSEF, or if you have external funding from another organization or perhaps from your department, as well as any donations. In terms of more about the application process, our timeline is shown here. So our upcoming deadlines are um, the application windows open right now and it closes on October 15th at noon, uh, as well as the next um, application window will be in November from the 1st to the 15th and December 1st to December 15th. Um, and just to highlight for December in particular, uh, note that the 24th to the 31st is our holiday closure at the university. So make sure that you plan an event that would be within the time window so that students will be active and able to uh, benefit from the initiative. Also noting that proposals that are submitted before the deadline, they might be offered funding within two to four weeks. And uh, if you have a late proposal and doesn't make it into one window, then be prepared to uh, submit it for the next one. And again, because they could be um, completed within the term that it's submitted for, you could be submitting at the window of uh, November and then actually um, having the initiative in December to give you more time. I'm now going to walk you through an example of a submission. It's actually from my own experience. Um, I'm in a unique position where I was the president of our departmental GSA, uh, particularly the School of Pharmacy, so the Pharmacy Graduate Association, and we submitted in the past for GSI funds and also GSEF funds as well. Um, so for our uh, submission for GSI, we did an event called Trick or Eats, as well as a Halloween potluck. It was a two-day event um, where for Trick or Eats, we had 
uh, graduate students form teams, and then we had uh, graduate students, uh, faculty and staff set up stations in their own offices or labs. And we would have the teams visit each uh, office or lab and perform a trick. Um, and if they accomplish the trick, then they would be given candy, but also a stamp on this passport that I'm showing here, which were uh, the rooms for each of the offices that were open for um, different activities. So for example, some of the tricks would be shooting a, a, a balloon that's attached to a dart wall. Um, another trick was needing to um, create, recreate a thriller dance that was on um, wheels of a chair. Uh, so you were in chairs, um, wheeled chairs, and you have to create a dance for it. Uh, as well as uh, eating a gross concoction and identifying at least 10 ingredients of that concoction. It was really fun, but disgusting. Um, the second day we had a Halloween potluck, which was funded by our School of Pharmacy department. And we did app, uh, pumpkin carving and apple bobbing and um, a costume contest. So it's just to give you an idea for uh, the GSI funds, it was towards the trick or eats but we combine that together with a, faculty, uh, with a departmental initiative. So different kinds of ideas that you can do with the GSI funds and other funds um, attached to it. And then just remember to have those itemized receipts. This is for a December event, but I think we get the idea. Um, and of course, I mean, we're now in an online environment, so you, we might not be able to do this in person, but if you wanted to run this kind of event, virtually through Zoom, for example, that is a potential as well. Uh, and my last few slides is to give you tips on how to make your application successful. So my first tip is to be up to date with our uh, GSA newsletter and our social media. That's where we um, give a reminder about the calls for GSI window openings. Um, as well as checking out our website at the start uh, of every term um, for when those windows will be. The second is to plan early and to, so planning early is important because if you know that the windows are open at certain times that you can host events um, after those time windows. So for example, I gave you that you can apply in November but host the event in December as long as it's uh, completed before the term finishes. Remember to fill out all uh, fields of the GSI form. Um, I'm giving an example here where you are to identify other funding sources, but as well as if it's been presented to your department, uh, graduate association or society. And that's so that um, you could see if there's any collaboration that can take place or perhaps that um, they are aware that you will be hosting this kind of event uh, with your department. And also don't miss the deadline, as I've said before. The third is to consider um, your plans and what will be mainly in an online environment. So something important for um, the COVID-19 pandemic and all the restrictions that are taking place. We want you to take advantage of our online environment. Um, these initiatives would be really important to students in addition to the GSA um, social and wellness events and other sorts of workshops that are taking place. If you have an idea specific to your department or faculty or with other students, this would be a good opportunity. Uh, some examples I have here that we thought of, of are delivering care packages, something that uh, Matthew also um, gave the idea for, as well as um, a virtual escape room with prizes potentially using funds for that. So if you check out our um, GSA, website, you'll also see that we have a virtual escape room at the grad house that's open right now um, where you can get prizes. Another example is having community coffee breaks. So perhaps once a week you want to host um, a coffee break session online with your peers and uh, perhaps fund some mugs and some coffee for um, us to all get together and have a chat. Other ideas are to have a Netflix party, so you can have that as an extension on your computer and uh, offer popcorn and drinks as a social. And then as a last example, you could do a fireside chat with a guest speaker. Uh, for example, we once did a, an alumni event 
where we invited alumni to speak online, which was actually much better to do than in person because they ended up moving to all sorts of um, areas across the world. So we were able to have um, speakers come in for that. And I'm sure you can think of many more examples. So thanks for listening to the opportunities you could have with um, GSI funding. Uh, if you have any general inquiries, please uh, email gsaoffice at uwaterloo.ca. My email's here for any questions as well. Uh, and a link to our um, GSI uh, website um, by the GSA and our social media here as well. And then just another opportunity to check out where the GSI uh, form would be. That would be under services and then funding options. And of course, um, please try to apply now. The first deadline is Thursday, October 15th, and we're looking forward to receiving your applications. Thank you. Great, thank you, Cindy. Um, I think this is a lot of really great information for you. I know many of you joining us today are uh, new students this term, and I think it's really helpful to learn about these opportunities early on so you can start thinking about how you might want to uh, use this uh, throughout your time here at the University of Waterloo. So we're going to move now into uh, some questions that we've received from our audience. And please, if you have any questions, uh, you can continue to submit those. We do have about 20 minutes uh, for Q&A uh, if you do have some more questions. So the first one, uh, I'm going to combine kind of two questions that we've received, which is really around uh, eligibility to apply for these funds. Uh, so students are asking basically if you can confirm if all graduate students are eligible for these funds or if there might be any restrictions. Specifically, are there any restrictions to apply for students who might be online, uh, who would be international students, or students in a course-based program like MENG? Uh, so I'll turn this to Matthew first uh, and then I'll have Cindy respond after. Yeah, there are no restrictions. Uh, Basically, you are eligible to apply as long as you are a graduate student at the University of Waterloo. Doesn't matter whether it's in person, it's course based, or you're an international student. I hope I got all the uh, questions. Yeah, and I can just talk to you about um, GSI. Uh, likewise here, as long as you're a, a graduate student at the University of Waterloo and you've paid your GSA association fees uh, when you're paying tuition, um, you would be eligible, whether you're a course-based student or in an online environment, you can apply for these uh, GSI funds. Great. Um, so the next question here is uh, just for Matthew. Uh, Matthew, you had mentioned that you are currently recruiting for review committee members. Could you confirm the deadline for people to apply uh, for that position? It is October 7th, which I believe is Wednesday, if I know the days of the week, which is questionable at times. So Wednesday, so if you're interested in, in the faculties I identified, apply as soon as possible. Great, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so and uh, Rachel did put the link uh, to more information in the chat there. Um, so you can feel free to uh, go on the GSEF website to find more information about applying for those opportunities. All right, so the next question is a really interesting one here. Uh, they're asking, how would someone apply for funding for a cross-departmental event? Uh, so if someone is applying or thinking of doing something across departments, um, are there, is there anything else they would need to know about to apply? Uh, we'll turn this one to Cindy first and then to Matthew. Thanks, yeah, that's an excellent question and an excellent initiative that could take place. Uh, in terms of GSI, um, some ideas that you could have make this happen is to work with your uh, departmental GSA and several departmental GSAs across um, your faculty um, or between faculties and sort of come up with a plan together to submit as one through um, the GSI funds. Um, another way you can make this happen is if you have a social, you make a social committee with three or more dedicated students 
um, you can plan something with another uh, department as well and put something together. Um, certainly at this time with everything being virtual, it might actually be easier to have cross departmental um, initiatives. Uh, and we certainly um, want to promote this kind of um, work together. And I'll, I can pass it on to Matthew. I know GSF would be really excited to receive cross departmental initiatives, cross faculty initiatives. We have received uh, some applications in the past that are cross de departmental or cross faculty, but I always want to receive more of those since I find that it really helps build community uh, between all graduate students. So what you would need to do it to apply if you're a cross departmental group or a cross faculty group is like Cindy said, either go through your departmental graduate student association or faculty graduate student association, or you can just be a group of individuals as long as you identify someone on your application as the contact point and you highlight this is a cross departmental initiative since that would really set your application apart everything would proceed as it normally would if you were only applying for uh funding for initiatives within a single department great thank you both Okay, so the next question is, can we know more about the COVID-19 funding? So I think um, Matthew mentioned this in his presentation. Uh, the student is asking, could it cover um, for a student who isn't able to replace a damaged laptop at this time due to finances? So can you provide maybe a little bit more information about right. that, that funding GSEF has provided? Yes. So the COVID-19 funding uh, was introduced, if I believe, April, May, so a couple months was in, into the shutdown, and it was designed to supplement funding for finishing graduate students who might have lost uh, funding from other sources because the funding from other sources was dependent upon producing some sort of product that might no longer be possible. So Going to your specific question about a damaged laptop, this wouldn't be the best avenue for that funding. However, I do know that there are other sources of emergency funding, such as an emergency bursary run through the GSPA that might be able to cover it, but I let Sarah or Rachel speak more about that since they would know a lot more of the eligibility. Thanks, Matthew. So while you were talking, I found uh, the link from our Graduate Studies and Postdoctoral Affairs webpage uh, with a list of the financial need funding opportunities that are available. Uh, so I would encourage you to review the funds on those pages and reach out to our funding and awards team if you have more questions about that. All right, so the next question we have here uh, is how many people typically apply for your funding opportunities and what are your what are my chances like are there certain terms where I might be more likely to be successful than others. I'll turn this to Cindy first and then Matthew. Sure, um, in terms of GSI, we have a range of a different number of applications per term. Um, but do know that our budget is largely static in order to support um, GSI funding year to year. We do tend to have um, the most funding given out uh, and applications in the October month, uh, likely due to the fact that students are more settled in after September and thinking about what kind of in initiatives to um, plan out for the rest of the term. Um, so again, uh, you can apply right now in October and November and December for this term. And I would say that your chances to get funding do not differ depending on when you apply. Um, but do make sure what's more important is that you are comprehensive in your application form 
and describing how it's valued to uh, graduate students and thinking about the logistics, especially with everything being online. In fact, um, I think the fact that uh, we're all in this an online environment, it's really, we're really open to applications at this point and certainly none are rejected um, right off the bat. Uh, it'd be great to work with you to make something happen to benefit grad students. Thanks. Our application deadlines are, as I mentioned, October 16th, then there will be another deadline in June and another one in February. In terms of which semester you would have the greatest luck in, historically it's been the spring semester since that's when GSIF has not received as many applications compared to the fall and winter semesters. However, because everything is online and historical events do not reflect the current nature of uh, what the university is like, what graduate students are going through, it would probably be equal opportunities, really good opportunities. So at the moment, if you have an idea for an initiative, submit it as soon as possible. That way, if uh, GSEF receives more applications than expected in one semester and you get rejected for it, you still can submit in the next semester when there might not be as many applications. Great, thanks Cindy and Matthew. All right, so the next question here, uh, is there anyone that can, can review my application before I submit it or any other ways to ensure that I have filled it out properly? Uh, I'll let Matthew take this one first this time and then we'll go to Cindy. This is why I like uh, people submitting their applications ahead of the deadline because then I will quickly scan through it, see if there's anything that pops out at me, not just for if you are missing a field, but when I look through the answers, if I see something, well, I know the project review committee will ask a question on this topic, then I can send it back to you and say, thanks for your application. Could you also uh, comment on this particular aspect of your project? If it's the day of the application, depending on what time you submit, I might be able to still do the same thing but then there's a giant time crunch and well at least me I don't like stress when I submit applications so I imagine that most of you don't either. Yeah I can just add to that um, in addition to what Matthew said you know do it early so that you can get as much feedback as possible in a timely manner. Um, I think it's a good question there's a couple of ways you can do this so uh, Personally, when I uh, was at my departmental GSA, I reached out to our uh, previous president and kind of saw examples of what they submitted for GSI to kind of set the tone of what to submit um, and the level of detail, uh, as well as if you are within that social committee that you form in order to make a submission, um, you can speak with your departmental GSA and they'll have members that you could work together to kind of put together such a submission. Uh, as well as, same with Matthew, you can reach out to us at our office or myself in my email, and we can kind of bounce some ideas off of you or help refine some of your ideas before submitting so that um, you can make sure it's in tip-top shape and it will be successful. And just to add on one other thing that Cindy made me think of, in the coming months, what I want to do is actually include example applications of both sources of funding on the GSEF website. So that will be an additional avenue for what successful applicants have included in their application. So you might be able to model how much information you provide based upon uh, what you see. That's great. Thanks, Matthew and Cindy. 
All right, so our next question here, uh, is there any list of previously funded initiatives so that we can check ahead just to avoid repeating something that has already been done? I'll turn this to you, Cindy, first and then Matthew. Sure. So I know GSEF has a really good list already of examples and I'll let, of course, Matthew speak to that. Um, for GSI, um, we don't have that on our website, but we are open to basically any academic and social sort of events, one or the other. Um, and I, as an example of what sorts of social events you could do is the one that I brought forward with the Halloween event. Um, and of course, in an online environment, things would be a little bit different. Um, you can take some of the examples that I've uh, brainstormed and put together. And of course, you're, uh, you're free to um, come up with ideas um, of your own and uh, put them forward. Um, and uh, I mean, we accept um, any events to do with workshops, panels, um, guest lectures and conferences as well. Of course, keeping in mind the budget for GSI is slightly different from GSEF and um, that you can potentially pair them together. And I'll uh, bring that over to Matthew. Thanks, Cindy. Yes, on the GSEF website, I'll actually include a link in the chat. There's a list of project winners going back to 2008. So this will give you an idea of what sort of things that GSEF has uh, funded in the past. It doesn't really matter whether it's uh, the same initiative that might be repeated a few years later since as long as it's not the same group applying for the same thing, say that uh, uh, chemical engineering is applying for something that's extremely similar to an application in environment. GSEF still treats it as two distinct applications because they are coming from two distinct sets of people. And as I mentioned on the, in my presentation, when you go to the GSEF website to fill out an application form, you'll also see examples of some past GSEF project winners, uh, specifically pictures of what sort of events they held. And uh, as I get more pictures coming in, I'll continue updating the GSEF website to give you even more examples of what is being successfully funded in the past. Great, thank you both. So we have about three minutes left. So I'm, uh, this is gonna be our last question for today before we wrap up. Uh, so the question is, how do I know whether to apply for GSEF um, or GSI or both? Are there maybe any instances that someone would only be eligible for one or the other? Um, Cindy, I'll have you respond first and then uh, Matthew, if you have anything to add. Sure. So I think I hope that our presentations gave you a sense of um, how our different processes work and um, behind the scenes what happens as well, as well as the different timelines for submission and what kinds of projects um, examples for each in GSEF versus uh, GSI. But you can also see that there's lots of overlap. Um, I think Matthew can talk about that. Uh, but in just to highlight some of the differences for GSI funding. Um, you're looking at either an academic or a social event that is around $500. But remember, we do uh, think we do look at your eligibility for over that amount with the 50% of the 500 or 25% of any remaining amount. Um, that being said, if you are unsure, I would uh, either contact one of us or you can submit for both. Um, and I'll leave the rest of the question for Matthew. Thanks, Cindy. Yeah, um, as Cindy mentioned, there's a bit of overlap between GSEF and GSI, though one of the things that GSEF also funds is department improvements. If I showed you an example earlier in the hour of GSEF funding a couple fridges from the Department of Electrical and Chemical Engineering. But department improvements, social events, academic events, those are basically just really broad terms that might not cover every single initiative you can think of. 
So I want to come back to what I stressed during the presentation, which is that if you have an idea of something that can benefit graduate students, um, even if it, you're not clear whether it's a, even if you're not clear that it's a social event or an academic event or a department improvement, say it's in some sort of gray zone, feel free to reach out to me or submit your application. And regarding if you want to apply for GCEF or GSI, I strongly encourage you to consider both. We have received several applications in the past that say we've gotten this funding from GSI, can GCEF also help top it up? There are a couple of things that GCEF isn't able to fund, mainly alcohol and honoraria. So if you're uncertain if uh, GCEF would be able to fund a particular idea of yours or a particular part of an idea, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be able to provide you with some more detail. Incidentally, oh. no. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. incidentally. Thought you were done. <laughs> pause for effect. <laughs> incidentally, this is one reason why GSEF might like to see department uh, financial support because if you have, say, a wine and cheese night, GSEF will be more than happy to fund the cheese, but it doesn't sound as good if you just have cheese night. So this is where the department would come in and provide, you know, the alcoholic beverage. No, Great. Right. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you so much, uh, Matthew and Cindy, for sharing all of this information about how uh, graduate students can fund their initiatives. I think these are great opportunities. Um, and I've seen lots of really creative ideas uh, that graduate students have had that have been funded by um, either GSEF or GSI. So I'd really encourage you uh, to think about ways that you can um, use these funds and create um, additional opportunities for yourself and other graduate students. So thank you all for joining us today. Just a quick reminder that when you exit the webinar today, you will get prompted with a feedback survey. We really appreciate if you can just take a minute or two to fill that out uh, so that we can continue to improve uh, the offerings that we have for graduate students. Um, so again, big thank you to Matthew and Cindy for taking an hour out of their day to join us um, and enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Bye.